Hi everyone, my name is Anaya Rai Singhani and I am an Associate Developer Advocate over here with MongoDB. Today we have a fun tutorial where we are going to be hosting our previously built uh, MongoDB Atlas and Flask application on Azure Container Apps. So this combination of Flask, Atlas, and Azure Container Apps actually allows for developers to build applications that are capable of handling large amounts of traffic and data while being extremely accessible from any machine or environment. So the specifics of this demo are as follows. We are actually going to be cloning our previously built Flask application that utilizes CRUD, create, read, update, and delete functionality applying to a bookshelf that is hosted in MongoDB Atlas. When properly up and connected to Postman or using curl, we can add in books, remove books, exchange books, or update books that are in our database. So from here, we are going to dockerize our application, and then we will host our dockerized image on Azure Container Apps. Once this is done, anyone anywhere can access our application. So there are a handful of prereqs in order to be successful with this demo, and they are one, that you need to first access and clone our Flask and MongoDB application from our GitHub repository. Two, you should have a MongoDB Atlas account. Three, a Docker desktop account. Four, a Microsoft subscription. And then I am using Python 3.9 or higher, so I highly recommend that you have that as well. And then Postman desktop or another way to test our functions. So once you have all of these prerequisites, and once you have a solid understanding of our previously built MongoDB Atlas and Flask application, which will be linked in the description below, then you are ready to take on this tutorial. All right, so let's jump right in. This application that I have on the screen right here is my Flask application that utilizes MongoDB Atlas as the database. And in previous tutorials, I have uh, walked through exactly how I built this application. So I'm gonna be linking the article in the video below. And then in those previous ones, um, we built out the full create, read, update, delete Flask application utilizing MongoDB, and then we uploaded it onto Azure App Service. This time though, I'm just gonna be recycling the same application we've already built, and I'm gonna be containerizing it and putting on Azure Container Apps instead. So if you do not know what this application is, I will have the GitHub repo and all the links to the video and the article below. So if you need to check that out first, please do. It goes into complete detail about how to use Flask, how to connect it to MongoDB Atlas, and then how to utilize all of our CRUD oper operations. So along the same lines, um, this is the application we're gonna be using, and I just wanna quickly show you guys what's in my database. So I just have four books here um, that are in Atlas already. And so once we have our website hosted on Azure Container Apps, um, we should be able to go to the URL and see all of these books. And then, of course, if we want to, you know, utilize our CRUD applications, we'll be able to as well. So the only real additions that I made to this application was implementing a Docker file. And so for those who don't know what a Docker file is, I'm just going to walk you through what all of these commands mean and why they're here. So first things first, um, with the from command, we wanted to specify a base image that our Docker container will completely be built on. So since I am using Python 3.9, I wanted to choose a base image, which was Python 3.9 Slim Buster. Then the work directory just sets the working directory inside the container to the directory I'm currently in, which is just my Azure Container Apps demo directory. Um, copy copies in our requirements.txt file. Run runs our requirements.txt file. And so as you guys remember or might know, the requirements.txt file holds all of our dependencies. The copy, once again, just copies in all the current files in our directory, just to make sure nothing's missing. Our environment just tells Flask to look for our main app.py file. And then expose is really important because Flask automatically listens to port 5000. So we need to expose port 5000. And then same thing with the command line, it's just saying how to run Flask, which is Flask run. And then it's allowing access from anywhere, which is why the host 0.0.0.0, .0, .0, .0 is in the command line. 
Then the only other addition that I made to our previous application was in the app.py file all the way at the very bottom where I input line 73 and 74, just once again allowing access from anywhere and exposing port 5000. So once you've created your Docker file and you've put in those two lines at the bottom of your app.py file, what we need to do next is create an Azure Container Registry. So there are a variety of ways to do this, but I wanted to do it through the UI itself. And I already have one up and running, but to access it, just search in Azure Container Registries, and you can create your own container registry, and it gives you a login server. So once your container registry is up and running, we need to log in and connect it. So to do that, you can just do docker login and then take that URL that's right here. Copy that in. And so I already have my credentials in place. Um, so my login has succeeded. But if you haven't logged in before, all you have to do is click on access keys. It'll give you a username and a password that you need to put in. Um, because it's sensitive information, I'm not going to click on the settings now, but in my article, I do have screenshots with my password and username blocked out. So if you want a full visual, you can access it there. Um, but once you do that, just go back and put in the username, put in the password, and then your login will be successful. So we needed to create and log in to our container registry because we're gonna be building our image and pushing it to our Azure container registry. That's why it's so important. So now that we've logged in and we've connected it with VS Code and our Docker and everything's good on that front, we now need to actually build our image and push it to this registry. And for mine, once again, it's a Naya registry. So there is a little bit of a hiccup with this because I am working on an M1 Mac. So what we need to do is reconfigure our image so that it is using AMD64 instead of the configured ARM64. And to do this, we need to utilize something called Build X. And this is just because Azure Container Apps right now only supports um, Linux AMD64 container images. So you can't deploy an ARM-based container image which if you have an M1 machine the way I do, your image will automatically be built as ARM. So build X just allows you to reconfigure it. And to do this, um, it's very it's a very simple workaround. It's just docker build X install. So this is just installing build X. And then now we need to enable docker build X to use the docker command line. So that's just docker build X create and then use. So once you get the name of a container up and running, you know that you have build X installed. Now we can actually build and push our image to our container registry. So this is the command that we're going to be using and let me move this out of the way. Okay. This is the command that we're going to be using. It is Docker build X build. Now we're going to specify the platform, which is going to be Linux AMD 64. We are tagging it with our URL from before, just the Anaya registry one that we found on the Azure UI. And then we are tagging it and we are naming our image first, which is Azure Container Apps Demo. And then we are tagging it with latest. And that's so just that I know exactly which image is the latest one that I'm using. And then this just allows you to see it in your images. And the period is just to copy everything over. So once I have that command in, I'm just going to build it. Okay, so once it's built, if you build it the first time, it might take um, pretty long. It took me 34 seconds, but that's fine. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to push it to our Azure Container Registry. So this is the command we're going to be using, which is just docker push Anaya Registry once again, the URL for my registry. And then same thing, image name and the tag. Just enter that in. And it's pushed and it says it's done. But now let's go check and make sure that we can see it. So we're going to go back to our container registries and we just want to make sure that the image is actually there and uploaded. So in your container registry, go all the way down to services and hit repositories. And under here, you will see your image name, and then you'll see your image tag, which is latest. 
And as you can see, it is the most recent image. So now that we're here, we can actually upload it to container apps and host our own URL. So let's go here and click home, then click container apps, and we're going to hit create. And so our container app name, let's do flask, uh, flask atlas um, azure demo a little bit long but that's fine and then resource group i want my resource group to be central us and then same thing because i have my resource group as central us i want my region to also be central us um, and then container apps environment is fine we can leave that and then hit next with app settings we do not want to use a quick start image we want to use our own repository so once again, the registry is going to be the same. I only have one up and running, so it's very easy. Um, but the same URL from before. The image is my image name, and then the image tag is latest. And then here we need to put in our environment variable. Um, and if you remember from previous videos, that our environment variable always lives in our .m file. So I'm just going to go in and copy this in, and this is going to allow us to actually access our database. So let's copy that in. And then for ingress, I'm going to enable it. I'm going to hit on accepting traffic from anywhere. And then insecure connections, I'm going to say yes to just in case. And port, I'm once again going to expose it. So now that we have everything in place, let's just hit review and create. Make sure that everything lines up with um, the way that you want to have it. And make sure definitely that your region is the same as your resource group. So now that we have everything the way that I want it, I'm just going to hit create. Once your deployment has been successful, you're going to get this page um, and then just hit go to resource. And as you can see, you have an application URL. And look at that. We have our demo app. Um, we have our home page that we created in a previous video. And now I just want to make sure that we're actually connected to our database. So I'm going to hit books. Now as you can see we have our own URL. It's hosted as a container app and we can view all of the books from our Atlas database. And if I wanted to utilize all of my CRUD functionalities I will be able to because I know that the URL works. Congratulations! Our Flask and MongoDB Atlas application has successfully been containerized and hosted on Azure Container Apps. So throughout this video, we have gone over how to create a Docker file, an Azure Container Registry, and along with how to create and host our application on Azure Container Apps. So grab more details. Um, there will be extensive links in the description below. And if you would like to connect with me on LinkedIn, once again, my name is Anaya Raisingani. Thank you so much for watching.